Welcome to The Sword and Laser. I'm Veronica Belmont. I'm Tom Merritt. Oh, you're a little, <coughs> little down? It's, it's, no, it's nothing. Okay. I don't, don't worry about it. All right, well, hey, this is our series of author spotlights where we do things like help you understand that even if you're constantly rejected by people, you can still end up writing official Star Wars books. What? Yeah. Constantly rejected, but still write Star Wars books? I know you're rejected a lot, so. This changes everything. That's just a couple of things you're gonna find out when we tell you seven things you should know about Kevin Hearn. You feel, I feel like you're happy, but also a little bit Shh, aggressive. Writing now. my Star Wars book. Okay. A little aggressive. Hearn was a high school English teacher for 17 years. He's also been a singing waiter, an editorial cartoonist, a pizza delivery dude, and spent a brief stint as the lead singer in a band called Dr. Xerox and the Low Toners. He wore a cape and a red beret with a giant rhinestone studded pair of Elton John glasses. Of course he did. Hearn credits One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey as being the inspiration for him to become a writer. His first completed novel, The Road to Cibola, was never published and he calls it an utter piece of trash. The first Iron Druid Chronicles novel was rejected a lot. 23 agents and five publishers passed on it. Kevin writes on his website to keep writing and don't give up. The Iron Druid Chronicles follows 2,100-year-old Druid Atticus O'Sullivan, who's hiding out in Tempe, Arizona from Irish gods who want to kill him. Or alternately, many think it's about O'Sullivan's dog Oberon. Kevin says there will be nine books total in the Iron Druid Chronicles. The series started as an idea for a webcomic. He almost entered it in a contest, but after scripting out six pages, he realized DC Comics would own the property if he submitted it. So he made it a novel instead. Kevin Hearn wrote the final novel in the Star Wars trilogy, Empire and Rebellion, that will follow after Martha Wells' Razor's Edge and James S. A. Corey's Honor Among Thieves. Del Rey approached Hearn, who's a big fan of the movies, but less familiar with the extended universe, which the publisher wanted in the authors of the trilogy. Kevin is also contracted to write a new epic fantasy called A Plague of Giants, which he expects to begin this year. Well, those are the facts, but there's more to a man than just facts. Aaron helps us understand a little more about Kevin Hearn in his whiteboard video. There's a tendency in genre fiction to treat shorter, standalone works as the vehicle for light, frothy fun, and use longer series to explore deeper, darker themes. But series doesn't have to mean serious. Meet Kevin Hearn, my nominee for Guy Obviously Getting Pure Enjoyment Out of His Writing. Yes, the main character in his Iron Druid novels is a 2100-year-old initiate of a religion so notoriously grim that their apocryphal sacrament is barbecuing folks in giant wicker effigies. But hey, that doesn't mean you can't have fun with it, right? In review after review, words like romp keep cropping up. Tonally, I'm reminded of Chantel Madison's Kept series, which similarly balances dire threats with character quirks. The protagonist's voice is a compelling mixture of sage and surf bum, alternating modern slang and SAT vocabulary. Think Gandalf the Grey, as portrayed by Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Indeed. It's maybe also worth noting that Hearn is working here in a subgenre which is heavily dominated by female authors, so it's an interesting point of contrast to see how he handles the masculine psyche. Add in some real opportunities for education about Celtic mythology and you have a party on your hands. Interestingly, his last name, Hearn, is a homonym of Hearn the Hunter, who's an ancient Celtic god, so his writing about ancient Celtic gods would be kind of like if I got a job making pots, or, or maybe if Tom had a lot of merit badges, or Veronica started doing something in French, or maybe if she killed Dracula a lot in a video game. I digress. The point is, fun. Fun? Who doesn't like fun? I do. I do love a good fun. Everybody loves fun. Okay, yeah. In fact, we've got fun on board. Oh, do we? As a matter of fact. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's time to head to the source, folks. The best source for this is Kevin Hearn himself. Lem, bring him up through the airlock, please. Hello, sir! Hello! Hi. Welcome Hi. aboard! Thanks for Welcome. joining us. Hey, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Have a seat. Thank you. So How first was your of trip all, up yeah. to the castle? Oh, it was fabulous. In fact, that green airlock door thingamabobber is the best entrance I will probably ever have in my life. <laughs> so thank you for that. Hopefully, hey. hopefully the ride wasn't too bumpy. Oh, no, not at all. Okay, good. Smooth sailing. Yeah. Good. So we have a ton of listener questions uh, for you today. It was it was pretty impressive, actually, in our Goodreads forums. People were really excited to have you on the show. That's nice. Of them. My readers are cool. Yeah. Everybody, there's great questions, too. Let's start off with Nick. 
uh, who wanted to know, given the sort of cross-pollination that we see between Oberon and others from the IDC with various figures in the Dresden Files on Twitter and Tumblr, oh, okay. do I have to worry about a fangasm of epic proportions at the news of any official sort of crossover novel or short story or something? Uh, probably not. Uh, the, you know, both uh, me and Jim Butcher are incredibly busy with the books we already have to write. And I don't even know how they would do such a thing because we're with different publishers. And I imagine oh. it would be a little bit of a fight of some sort. I don't know. I really don't know uh, how such a thing would happen. Swords. Uh, but, but yeah, swords and <laughs> lasers. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. But, but I, yeah, we're, we're not planning on any sort of crossover. People were trying to figure out in the, in the comment thread as well if you run the Oberon Twitter account or I if do. it's a fan. Do you do? Okay. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't let anybody else mess with that. I don't know. Some of the I best things out Oberon there are. I thought ran it. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Tom. That was this is this this kind of thing is very hard on Tom. You have to understand I'm when his dreams when his I'll, dreams get crushed. I'll get over it. <laughs> I, I was saying, like, some of the best things I find online are are completely random fan-driven Twitter accounts based on fictional characters that the authors or the creators have, like, literally nothing to do with. And they just, like, see this character come to life um, in a non-genre, like, fiction kind of way. I think the Will McAvoy uh, Twitter account for, <laughs> for, for Newsroom is not affiliated with the show at all. It's just a guy that writes, like, Will McAvoy, the, the main character. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's really, really well done. So, hey, yeah, don't knock it. It's some, someone could be pretty good at it, too. You never oh, know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm sure somebody would, yeah, but I, I, I started to do that because I, I began to suspect that the dog was far more popular than I was. <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, it, and it is a different voice for me, so I, I get to have uh, fun with that. That's oh, great. Yeah. And actually, a moron Oberon, of course. Uh, Pagan Love writes, when is Oberon finally going to ditch the two humans who are so clearly holding him back and get his own spin-off series? Uh, I don't know if he'll have a series, but uh, I do have a short story planned uh, with, with him as sort of the main character. It's an all dog kind of thing and the humans are peripheral. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know when I'll get to it, but I am planning to get there someday. They also want to know what challenges you kind of come up against writing in the canine, canine uh, voice, in the canine point of view. Actually, it's, it's really easy. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't plan Oberon at all. Uh, he's not even in my outlines. I, I just know he will jump in there at some point and say what he wants to say. And it's usually just something that's on my mind at the time. So uh, just being a smart aleck kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, dogs are remarkably simple characters. They like food, they like maps, and, you know, they like other dogs' rear ends, and there you go. So yeah. it, it doesn't take a lot of planning. For me, the, the dialogue for a dog is pretty much just ball, 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 <laughs> ball, ball, food, 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 food. Yeah. Outside. That's pretty easy to write. <laughs> Out, outside? Yeah. Out, outside? 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 We have a list of words that will drive our, our dogs crazy if we string them all together, like ocean, car, beach, treats, food. They just brain. They explode. don't actually understand the words. They understand the intent behind the word. They can sense it. They That's know same, some words, so, so but... So same as humans. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, Alan writes, how much research was required in all of the different religions that you represent so well in your books, especially the Druids and Norse religions, and also why chicken apple sausages? Oh, okay. Um, well, as far as the research stuff, I was interested in religions as a child, uh, but more really a college student. I took some classes in them, and uh, we were required to actually go and uh, attend services of pretty much all the major religions. And uh, then we kind of uh, visited some others that were maybe not so major uh, as well. So I, I really enjoyed them all because they all have, you know, a basic seeking of divinity, which I appreciate. So um, some of my background came from that. Some of it came from a lot of online research uh, that's out there. There are extant original sources for the uh, Celtic myths that I used that uh, are basically translated from Old Irish by... You know, Irish universities uh, into English. So I use those uh, versions that are on the Irish websites. Um, and then uh, as far as the Norse stuff, I do uh, I did find the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda online. And there are a couple of good books on Norse mythology. Out there yeah, too. more and more libraries like Trinity College and the British Museum are, are putting these rare texts online. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. I'm sure that was some of what you were able to take advantage of, it sounds like. Exactly. The, the Annals of the Four Masters uh. Uh, is out there, and a lot of the stories about Cahoolan and the Morrigan and all that stuff is in there. So. Have you had an opportunity to go visit any of those places? I haven't. I've never been to Europe. 
Oh, I, oh really? I, yeah, I, I would love to go someday. Uh, you got to go but, to like Worldcon or something, like when it's in yeah. London at least. Yeah, I, I, I hope I get over there sometime. I just, I don't know when. Uh, I've been doing a lot of the United States and enjoying that because every state's kind of like a different country. Well, that's absolutely true. I think people yeah. kind of forget how many different types of places we have in right in our own country, you know, that exactly. you can you can visit so many different amazing places. There's Iowa and Illinois and Missouri. Yes. Those are places. Those are those I are some up. of the places. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, oh, uh, but chicken apple sausages before we forget. Oh, sorry. Why why chicken apple sausages? Yeah, he says also why chicken apple sausages. <laughs> I think the answer to that is because chicken apple sausages. Yeah, it, it, they're fun uh, to eat, and also it's kind of fun to say chicken apple. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I really don't have any other uh, good reason for it. I had one at the movies the other night. Oh? Yeah. A chicken apple they sausage? They had chicken apple sausage at the movie theater. Oh, I, th I think I do remember why it was now. Most most of the time you just say sausage, and you know, like people ask, well, what kind? Uh, and and I don't know, if you just say regular, what, what does that even mean? So I had to define, yeah, I had to come up with something, and... Yeah, that just was for there. reference, is this in the book? Yeah, or just life? It, it's it's, <laughs> yeah, it's in the book. I actually don't eat them uh, myself uh, very often, but uh, the the uh, in the book, Oberon is obsessed with with sausages and chicken apple are his favorite. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, Ralphie has a question. Uh, are you planning any other books in the IDC universe, like perhaps the Tempe Coven or or the Morrigan back in the day? Oh, I see. Uh, I'm not planning it at this time, but. I am very aware of the potential for other stories. Um, it's too far ahead for me to think about right now, but I hope to maybe explore some of that later on. Sure. Gotcha. Sure. It's in the periphery, it sounds like. Yeah, Yeah. at the moment, I'm just kind of focused on finishing the storyline I currently have, Indeed. and then uh, when I'm finished, we'll, we'll see uh, what, well, we'll what kind of comes forth in the old noggin. Yeah, I mean, so there's nine books planned in the yeah. series, and, and uh, you mentioned earlier that you were working Oberon into a, a certain timeline, so it sounds like you're a timeline kind of guy that you maybe outline all of your stuff first and then kind of go into that writing phase, or do you just write from scratch? I, I've done both. Mm -hmm. uh, Hounded was written, uh, the first book was written from scratch uh, without any sort of outline because I had no contract, I had no deadline, and I could just kind of go at my own pace and la la la. Um, so I use outlines now to, to kind of make sure that every day I'm being productive and I'm not just saying, what do I write? Oh, well, I have to write this, you know, I have an, you know, an idea from the outline of what I should be attacking. So that helps me stay on deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I do, I enjoy the, uh, seat of the pants kind of thing too, because, uh, you, you basically have the opportunity for more unexpected twists, uh, you know, that arise out of that you can sometimes feel a little bit chained to your outline. Mm, mm -hmm. um, although I, I, I am not chained to it. I, I try to consciously say, ah, screw You're that, screw that outline. I'm going to try something yeah. else right now. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Trike asked a question I think is on, on a lot of people's mind too. Uh, any chances for graphic novels, TV series adaptations, mm -hmm. any other, ex like, I don't know if you can call it expanded universe, but uh, yeah. but sort of other takes. I would be delighted if someone wanted to do that, uh, but I, I personally that? do not have uh, any power over that kind of thing. I, I can't. I don't have the time to develop a graphic novel myself, um, and I, I don't have the wherewithal to do the movie thing or sure. TV or anything like that. So, um, if somebody else wanted to take that on, uh, call my agent. Yes. Yeah. Are Absolutely. you peripherally aware of any like fan stuff that's been going on, like fanfic? I know a lot of authors kind of stay mm -hmm. away from that stuff because they don't want to be accused of taking ideas from right. from fanfic. But do you know if there's any any of that kind of stuff going on? I don't know. Uh, I it'd be cool if there was. I guess. Uh, I know that people send me cosplay stuff sometimes. Oh, They'll send fun. me some uh, so, some uh, pictures that you know. And hey, I went to this con and I dressed up as Granuel or Atticus. You know. Nice. And, and those are always fun to get. You ever give me Oberon's? No, uh, I, I get pictures of people, you know, uh, of Irish wolfhounds that people Irish send to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> Dressed and, up and, as and Irish wolfhounds. Cool. It looks like it looks like Oberon. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did the tattoos though. Uh, I had an artist uh, illustrate those, and then I put them on my website so that if people wanted to just print them out on like temporary tattoo paper and use it for their cosplay, they can do it. Oh, how cool! Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I love that. I saw a great Irish wolfhound the other day. They are beautiful dogs. Yes, they are. They are intimidating as heck, though, too. Like, yes. can you? I meant, like, do you know what they look like? Oh yeah, like, no. I saw one the other day at the dog park. Actually. Oh yeah. yeah. 
Because they're kind of like they they rem- like I thought you 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 could fight a wolf or you could take down a wolf. Are there wolves in Ireland? Not anymore. They uh, they got them all. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, they they, they <laughs> serve their purpose. St. Patrick drove out the snakes, yeah. and, and, the, the Irish and Oberon wolfhounds. drove out the Irish wolf. Gotcha. Or, or drove out the wolf. <laughs> yeah. our, our next question comes from Jason. Um, he asks, "How is it working in someone else's universe, especially a big franchise as Star Wars? Um, are there any special restrictions or requirements that you can talk about?" Well, the, the restriction is that I can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You get a big NDA agreement that, you yeah. know, stormtrooper is guarding your house, that kind of thing. So, well, we've, we've like had uh, Ari Salvatore on the show a few times, and, yeah. and he's had some experience in that universe, sure. as, as you as you maybe can imagine. But did you enjoy it? Like, was it fun to work with I'm, those characters? I'm still in it, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. right. The I'm new, still working right. on it. And, and it's fun, yes. Yeah, I get to work with Luke Skywalker and R2-D2 and, you know, all the stuff that I grew up with. I was seven years old when, when Star Wars first Me came too. out. Me too. We must be about the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the biggest screen in Arizona, I got to see it there. And the Star Destroyers coming out of the top of the screen. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, it was awesome. I saw it at drive-in the first time. Oh, no kidding. It was so fun. It was paired with, like, Grizzly Adams or something. <laughs> That's a like pair. a double feature. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go yeah. ahead. It was weird. Uh, so Tori writes, I love that Kevin uses Shakespeare in his character's verbal battles. When you were teaching, what was your favorite author to teach? Shakespeare was good. Yeah. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald was just beautiful with his, you know, prose. I loved him. And I loved, uh, the thing I loved the most, though, was Teaching the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Mm. I had this very, you know, marked up copy of the poem and, all of the hidden symbols and things in there. And the kids would always be blown away afterward. They're just like, I didn't know poetry could do that. Because they all think poetry is basically, well, here's a sonnet, and it has this mm-hmm. rhyme scheme, and that's it. And you get into this modernist stuff, and it is all uh, symbols and illusions and things like that. And once once you unpack that for them, they're sort of blown away, and they, they look at poetry differently. So What a great feeling when you could do that. You yeah. Know, and, and raise that appreciation. That's amazing. Yeah. We were actually talking about poetry, especially in the sci-fi fantasy genre with uh, Rachel Swirsky. Uh-huh. And uh, she, we were asking kind of, like, why don't we see more sci-fi fantasy poetry in the mainstream? Because I feel like there's a huge community uh, of it, um, you know, in fanzines and in, in, in uh, anthologies and, and collections yeah. of short stories. But I feel like a lot of the authors we talk to don't really talk about their poetry that much. Have you ever kind of gone into that space and tried your hand at poetry? I, I've tried some poetry, but, but uh, it was actually... Uh... Some of it's shorter, but then I also did a line-by-line parody of The Wasteland. Oh, cool. Uh, and it was all about uh, teach- uh, this faculty I was teaching with at the time and uh, their struggles, symbolically, uh-huh. with uh, educational <laughs> bureaucracy. So uh, I- I've done that kind of thing, but not never seriously, uh, at, at, like you're talking about, yeah. you know, in a fanzine or something like that. Yeah. That might be interesting. Yeah. Um, our next question comes from Jeff, and he wants to know if the characters that you write about, are they based on real people, or are they more of an amalgam of a lot of different personalities? Uh, there's one character, the, the widow McDonough, mm-hmm. that was uh, based on my late grandmother. But other than that, they're, yeah, I just made them up. Nice. <laughs> They're just pulled from different parts of your subconscious. Probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All fictional. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Clay wants to know, you quite often mention in your blog and other social media about music that you listen to while you're writing. Uh, most of the kick-ass music I get for the testosterone characters, but I would like to ask what music you associate with, and I, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but Granuel? Granuel. Granuel. Yes. Uh, actually, it's the same. Uh, I feel that Granuel is just as kick-ass as Atticus is, if not more. So I listen to a lot of instrumental metal, like uh, a Scale of Summit. My editors turned me on to these guys, and they've yeah. got three or four albums out, and I just have them on a playlist, and I, uh, you know, it goes for hours, and it's not, you know, anytime there's lyrics to music, it kind of, those words yeah. interfere with the words I'm trying to produce. So I like instrumental stuff, and uh, that's what I use. Or uh, Rodrigo y Gabriela, the, uh, the Mexican duo that, that does the Yeah, I've seen the them. I think they were on... Um... Were they on No Reservations? I feel like they were on some Anthony Bourdain show, but I might be thinking of a different Thank act. You. It's possible. They're amazing. But Scale the Summit was the other one you Scale mentioned? Scale the Summit. I Definitely check, check those guys out. out. Yeah. The guy plays a six-string bass, uh-huh. and uh, it's, it's beautiful, gorgeous stuff. That That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, I have that problem, like, trying to do any work with, with lyrical stuff going on at the same yeah. time. It's, it's pretty distracting. But you can find a lot of great stuff out there. That's I tend to err on more the side of, like, ambient techno or trance when I'm writing. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do, yeah that class- work too. I do classical. I go to Pandora and classical. I type in Mozart and just let it play. Nice. Yeah. All right, well. Do you still play, by the way, music? Oh, yeah. Not anymore. Um, 
No, I, I was a singer. Is that mm -hmm. what you mean? Like, yeah, like the like, band? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, Dr. I, Xerox. I was, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Xerox and the low toners, yeah. Uh, I was just the singer for the band. I, I was, uh, you know, and, and the band broke up, Dave. So, uh, uh, what can I say? Any any YouTube videos out there that we can find? <laughs> Reunion <laughs> That's really good. The, the, see, I had a red beret and like Elton John sunglasses and a cape That's with funny. a big X on it, you know, in Courier. Uh, yeah, it, it was pretty over the top, but it was just to entertain the kids at a pep assembly, you know. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, now it is time uh, for our super questions. Oh, okay. These are super questions. Um, they're not, uh, they're not as intimidating as they sound, we promise. Okay. Um, so the first one is, uh, we ask a lot of different authors these questions, so we can kind of, you know, take the temperature of the room. Uh, the first question, I'd like my books to be seen next to... Booze. Booze. Okay. Right on. Sure. Whiskey? I will do that. Yes. Scotch? No. No. <laughs> Irish whiskey. Irish, Irish whiskey. whiskey. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not the Scotch stuff. There's actually a difference in the spelling. Yes. Yeah. So, so the whiskey with the E. Mm -hmm. is, the, is, the, is the Irish whiskey. And, and Canadian then, yeah. whiskey is just Y. And right? Scotch is just Y. And Scotch is just Y. And then ours yeah. is bourbon. And we have bourbon and rye. And rye, right? Yeah, which yeah. are both different. And we Tennessee. All like whiskeys a lot. And Ten Tennessee. Don't forget. And Kentucky bourbon. We've become a whiskey show. It's weird. Bourbon, like, it just kind of happens. It's not a bad thing. Because we used to just drink wine and then it turned into whiskey. I don't know if we just became well, more hardcore. I am committed to buying Iron Druid Chronicle hardbacks and putting them next to a bottle of Tullamore Dew. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now that I know the answer. Yeah, to this right. send me the picture. I will. <laughs> uh, and our other super question uh, I know they're not together anymore, but if they were, I would like Dr. Xerox and the Low Toners to be on a double bill with... Oh! David Lee Roth, when he had that band right after he left Van Halen, uh -huh. with uh, Billy Sheehan and Steve Vai and Greg Bissonette on drums. Yeah, yeah. That Good matchup. That was wild. Well, you, That's the, that just the guitar gigolo, in the, that Yes, that but, well, actually, the I think the Skyscraper album, okay. when they did some just ridiculous stuff with their, you know, their music... And there's like, oh yeah, Dave's singing now. But mostly it was there for, for the bass and the guitar. Those those guys were so brilliant. You listen to some of those old songs, it's it's ridiculous. The matchup of dreams. Yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Kevin, fun. thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, thank, thank you. you. It was so fantastic. Much. It was really fun. And coming to visit us. us up here in the Space Castle is oh, always, always My fantastic. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, Hunted, book six of the Iron Druid Chronicles came out June 25th, 2013. Shattered, the next version is out as of June 17th. All right, well, that's it, folks. If you want more Sword and Laser, there is tons of it. You can join our Goodreads group at goodreads.com and subscribe to the podcast, both audio and video, at swordandlaser.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, bye. 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 We will. Lem, hey Lem, can you get the lights?